Smilodons, or more commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger. Powerful and ferocious, these prehistoric cats once populated North and South America. They were carnivorous predators, hunting large prey such as the woolly mammoth and bison. There were three species of Smilodon that lived from two and a half million years ago until 10,000 years ago. Smilodon gracilis and Smilodon populator were found in South America, and Smilodon fatalis was found in North America. They all belonged to an extinct subfamily of Felidae. Their characteristic feature was the elongated canine teeth giving them the well-known name of the saber-toothed cats. The three different species of Smilodon differed significantly in size from one another. The smallest, Smilodon gracilis, was comparable to modern-day jaguars, and Smilodon fatalis was similar to Siberian tigers. Smilodon populador, however, was the largest of all, weighing in at 220 to 360 kilograms. Some fossils of this species have even found them to have weighed up to 400 kilograms. Scientists have been able to study large numbers of Smilodon fossils found in the Los Angeles tar pits at Ranchero La Brea. They've been able to determine that the Smilodon's most likely behavior from skeletal morphology and animal paleopathology is showing the animal's stresses, strains, and injuries. Some scientists suggest that the saber-toothed cat was a social species, similar to that of modern-day lions. This belief has risen from fossils that have been found to have injuries that have healed long before the animal has died. It is assumed that an animal would need assistance to survive an injury in the wild. This suggests Smilodons work together, like a pride of lions. The counter-argument to this is that modern-day cats heal quickly without needing help, for example, to eat. Furthermore, Smilodon's relatively small brain is not in keeping with that of a social species. Saber-toothed cats are known to have been ferocious predators. You would have been forgiven for thinking that they were similar to today's big cats. However, their approach to hunting differed slightly. Smilodon had very powerful front limbs, suggesting that these were key to catching prey. Their long, elongated canines were prone to breaking and so the big cats relied more heavily on immobilizing their prey with their front limbs before biting to kill. They would use their front legs to knock their prey to the ground or cling on and pin them down. Today's big cats often hold onto their prey with their teeth during an attack. It was once thought that Smilodon hunted an open grassland, taking down large herbivores such as bison. This myth has now been debunked, and more recent research suggests that Smilodon actually hunted in forests and amongst the shrubbery, rather than chasing prey in the open. Smilodon was more of an ambush predator, using the forest to remain hidden. They fed on large species such as giant ground sloths and the Macrochenia, which looked a bit like a large llama. Hunting in the forest meant that the saber-toothed cats probably didn't compete with grassland-hunting carnivores, such as the dire wolves. Smilodons were around during the Pleistocene, but became extinct by the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary. The climate during the Pleistocene varied and changed enormously. Within a few decades, temperatures fluctuated by as much as 10 degrees Celsius, and there were irregular cycles of glacial and interglacial cold and warm periods. So why did the Smilodon go extinct? Did the rapidly changing environmental conditions lead to their demise? Or did early humans play a role? People believe that overkilling the Smilodon was responsible for its demise. This is because their extinction coincided with the arrival of the first humans to North America. However, this may not be the case. 38 genera became extinct in North America by the end of the Pleistocene. Little to no fossil records show death from human attack on the larger mammals, but there has been plenty of fossil evidence showing humans hunted bison and elk. Bison and elk still survive to this day, so clearly overkill from humans was not to blame. Furthermore, it seems there was limited genetic diversity towards the end of the Pleistocene, caused by the changing climate and shifts in the animal's ranges. Some scientists are looking at the environmental fluctuations that occurred during the Pleistocene to predict outcomes for changes in our current global climate. 
The pressures faced by the Smilodon and other coexisting species were numerous and complex. The mass extinction towards the end of the Pleistocene included a huge range of animals. Not all large mammals became extinct, and some smaller species and trees disappeared too. Some inhabited warmer climates, others endured the cold. Some were herbivores, some omnivores, and some, like the Smilodon, carnivores. Some were social animals, and some were solitary. It is thought that each and every species during the climatic changes of the Pleistocene had to adapt, migrate, or become extinct. It appears some species were better at adapting than others. It seems the Smilodon was not one of them. The smaller predatory species of the Pleistocene, such as the coyotes and wolves, have survived to the modern day, whilst the larger predators, including Smilodon, became extinct 10 to 12,000 years ago. Their extinction could have been, at least partly, attributed to the hotter and more humid climate at the beginning of the Holocene. Their inability to adapt to these changing temperatures could be responsible for their extinction. It is also probable that the specialized diet of the Smilodon contributed to their fate. Species like the coyote adapted to changes by hunting smaller prey and becoming more of a scavenger. Both the dire wolves and the saber-toothed cats showed no sign of changing their dietary preferences in response to the evolving ecology. Smilodon's extinction followed the mass extinction of the prehistoric herbivores, including the mammoths, giant sloths, and mastodons. The smaller predatory species survived by adapting their hunting behavior and becoming physically smaller. Today's coyotes are significantly smaller than their predecessors. The size of a Smilodon did not change throughout the Pleistocene. So, the question here today is, could Smilodon survive nowadays? For such a fearsome and ferocious beast, the Smilodon didn't appear to be very adaptable to climate changes. The current environmental conditions of the Earth are similar to those during the interglacial periods in the Pleistocene. This suggests that, from an environmental and climatic point of view, Smilodon could survive today. Finding prey, however, could be difficult. The exceptionally large species that Smilodon once hunted, such as the woolly mammoth, no longer roam the earth. Smaller animals, like bison and elk, however, can still be found on the North American plains, albeit in much smaller numbers. These were common prey for the saber-toothed cats, but the only wild bison now found in North America are within national parks. Yellowstone National Park is the only place to have truly wild bison, thought to be descended from those of the Pleistocene era. In South America, alpacas, llamas, peccaries, capybara, and deer could be considered prey species for the Smilodon. Jaguars currently hunt some of these species and, whilst jaguars didn't compete with Smilodon during the Pleistocene, in today's world they may do. With smaller habitat ranges available and smaller prey animals, apex predators are likely to be forced to compete with each other. The predatory animals currently living in North and South America are surviving and occupying the niche that was once filled by the Smilodon. If saber-toothed cats were able to be reincarnated and reintroduced into the wild, it is unlikely they would survive. The species we have nowadays are more adaptable when human interference is limited, bears thrive partly due to their broad dietary range. As well as eating meat, they eat berries, insects, and leaves. Wolves are social predators, unlike Smilodon, hunting in packs to take down larger animals. Both of these predators would compete with Smilodon for prey and territory. In South America, the jaguar has decreased in size since the Pleistocene. It has adapted very well to the damp habitat of the rainforest. It prefers to hunt smaller animals, such as rodents and monkeys, and can hold its breath underwater for up to five minutes whilst catching fish. It is difficult to imagine that Smilodon, once a successful apex predator, could survive today. Massive loss of habitat, reduction in the numbers of wild prey, and the presence of successful, more adaptable apex predators suggest Smilodon would struggle to survive. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, 
and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.